Hello students, how are you all? I hope all of you are doing really well. Students, today we are going to read a very interesting poem which is The Road Not Taken. It is written by Robert Frost. Now students, this poem was my favorite when I was in class 9. And I hope students, all of you will enjoy reading it and like it. So let's start. This is a picture of Robert Frost and I'll give you a little bit details about him. His full name is Robert Lee Frost. He was born on March 26, 1874 till January 29, 1963. He was an American poet. He was born in, <laughs> he was born in San Francisco, California. He is highly regarded for his realistic depictions of rural life. His work frequently employed setting from rural life in the earlier 20th century. Now he also writes poem which is very much close to one's real life. Okay. So first of all, I'll read the poem and then I'll start explaining the meaning line by line and I'll move stanza wise. So first see the whole poem. Okay, two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and sorry, I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as far that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first one for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way. I doubt it if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by. And that has made all the difference. So students, this was the, this was the whole poem. Now let's see it stanza wise. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. Now the poem starts with the word two. Okay, which means that you have to make a choice. So anytime or when we, ha when we have more than one option, we have to make a choice. The choice can be related to our day-to-day -day life. Or the choice can also, you know, give us a big impact in our future. Now, the word diverged. You see the word diverged? It means that separated and it took a different direction. We can also call it as folk. F-O-R-K. Once the poet was walking down a road and then there was a diversion. Okay? There were two different paths in front of him. And of course, he had to choose one out of them. Now, here, yellow. Yellow wood means a forest. Wood means forest. And why yellow? Yellow means the leaves had turned yellow in color because it was a season of autumn. Okay? So I hope this stanza is clear. I mean these lines are clear to you. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. So he is also feeling sorry that I wanted to travel on both the path. But of course, I cannot travel on, the both, on both the path at the same time. Okay. Now, let's see the next line. And be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Students, here you can see the picture of the undergrowth. Undergrowth means dense growth of plants and bushes. You can also see the picture and it will be clear to you. So what the poet is trying to say through these lines? The poet is trying to say that 
he is a single person and being one traveler being a single person he could only travel on one roads he cannot take both the roads because obviously a one person cannot be on two places at the same time so he had to make a op- he had to make a choice so what did he do to make a choice he kept standing there and looked at the path very carefully as far as he could see it before taking the path he wanted to know how it was was it suitable for him or not he was able to see the path till from where it curved after which it was covered with trees and it was hidden it also happens in our life when we want to make a choice we only have many we have many options but we choose only one okay and before taking that option we think a lot whether we should go for this or not whether it will be beneficial for us or not so the poet also is trying to look down as far as he could so that he can make a choice and the choice of course should be beneficial for him okay so students i hope these lines are also clear to you now next we'll see what happens then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear now there are some difficult words in this stanza the first one is fair now the meaning of fair students it is as good as the other one okay claim the meaning of claim is better option okay grassy grassy means unused so you must have also seen that the path which are less traveled by the people they are generally grassy okay and wanted wear means which had not been used it wanted wear so the road wanted wear okay it wanted some people a traveler to travel on it okay then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps a better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear the poet he kept on looking at one path for a long time and then he started walking on another path because he felt that the both paths were equally good so it was quite difficult for him to make a choice he says just as fair now this means that he felt that the both paths were equally good so it was very easy for him to make a choice and he took the other path and he started walking on one of them he also adds that maybe he felt that the path was better for him so he chose it as it had grass on it which means that many people had not walked on this path earlier which is why this path was grassy and wanted wear it means that it wanted someone to walk on it so the poet is thinking that he had a better claim better claim means a better choice because he had chosen a path which was grassy and it wanted people to walk on it okay students is it clear okay so let's see the next stanza though as for the passing there had warned them really about the same okay so firstly the poet says that the first road or the road that he chose was very grassy not people had not many people had walked on it but now the poet is saying that it is the same as the other path okay after he walked on the path for some t- distance he realized that both the paths had been worn out the same way both the paths were similar and equally walked upon the poet initially thought that he is taking a path which is less used by people and later he only contradicts himself and says that both the paths appear similar to him so the the path that he is walking on is the same as the path that he didn't choose that he didn't walk on okay 
and let's move on to the next stanza and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black now here this is a very important phrase students trodden black you don't get confused it's because the trodden black is very simple what does it mean trodden black refers to the leaves on the ground which have been stepped on by many people the dirt on their shoes on the leaves have turned them darker so students you must also have seen that there are leaves which look very fresh they are just fallen from the tree and they look really fresh but the leaves that the author is talking about the trodden black means that the leaves were not very fresh okay trodden black jab when you walk on the uh, leaves that have fallen on the ground and when you walk on it the the dirt on your shoes make it black so that is the meaning of trodden black okay the poet says that both the paths were similar that morning both had leaves on them and no step had trodden trodden them black they were still very fresh and yellow in color so i told you the paths seemed very much equal to the poet he is saying that both the path looked very similar to me in the morning okay and no step had trodden black jo leaves jo bhi gire the wahan pe they were very fresh and they were yellow in color it means that no other traveler had traveled on that path okay i hope it's clear to all of you now let's move to the next stanza Oh I kept the first for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way I doubted if I should ever come back so he really wanted to take the other path as well but he is consoling himself he is convincing himself that okay I'll come back and I will choose the other path some other day he decided that day he would take one day he would take one path and keep the other path for some other day although he also knew that one way leads on to another way and he seemed to himself that i don't think that i will also be able to come back i will ever be able to go back there at the same point and change my decision similarly students when we have two options in front of us when we take one uh, when we make a choice what happens is our previous choice also impacts our future choices okay and in this uh, like loop we never get a chance to go back where we have left and change our decisions so here also you can see the poet is trying to say the same thing he is saying that i want to come back some day but i also know that it's really difficult to come back because one way leads on to another way and another way leads on to another way so this process keeps on continuing and once you have reached a higher point it's really difficult to go back to the initial point or starting point right it is really difficult it seems impossible in this life and that is why he is saying that i doubted he is doubting that if i should ever come back so he is really confused here he really wanted to travel on the first path but then he is saying that okay i have kept it for some other day and also he is saying that i will never be able to come back he is doubting that if he can if he can ever come back okay students so till here i hope it's clear to all of you now let's see the next stanza i shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference and a student this is a very important stanza okay first of all let's see the word meanings the word sai sai means when you exhale a deep breath it can be out of disappointment out of sadness 
or maybe out of tiredness. Hence, hence, hence here means in the future. Okay, in the future. He says that in the future, he will take a deep breath and say that once upon a time, he had reached such a point in life that there were two options for him and he had travelled on the road which was less travelled by. That decision of his life has made all the differences in his life. Students, the poet here tries to give the readers a very strong message that whatever decisions that we are going to make, it should be very wisely taken and it should be done very calculatively because one decision leads to another. Like he told before, one way leads to another way. We should never make any decision out of impulsion. It's okay, like we should not say that, okay, let me just try this. We should not be casual in making decisions in life, you know. We should be aware of the consequences of the choices that we have to make because our future depends on the choices that we make today. Okay, so this last stanza is saying that I shall be telling the story with a sigh. Now here we really don't know whether the author is, the poet is really happy or he's kind of confused or sad with his decision. Because he's saying that the decision that I made that day has made all the difference. All the difference, okay? Because if he didn't travel on that road that was less traveled by, maybe, maybe his life would have been different today. He must have landed somewhere else. He must have been doing something else. So that decision of walking on a path which was less traveled by has brought so many changes in his life. And that is what he's saying after ages and ages. So students, that was all about this particular poem. I'm sure all of you have loved it, understood it and will take some learnings from this poem. Also, it's very important part of the poem is the literary devices or the poetic devices. Let's just see the poetic devices used by the poet. The first one is the rhyming scheme. So students, the rhyming scheme of this poem is A, B. A, A and B. Okay. Now, repetition. The second literary device used here is repetition. Repetition means something which is repeated. Okay. As you can see, ages is repeated. Two roads diverged in a word. This sentence is also repeated in stanzas 1 and 4. Next important literary device, students, here is Anaphora. The repetition of a word or phrase at the beginning of and like and is repeated at the beginning of lines 2, 3 and 4. Okay, you can see also the second line, the third line and fourth line begins with the, st with the word and. So this is a very good example of anaphora. Next is alliteration. What is an alliteration students? I hope all of you know. The occurrence or the repetition of the same letter or same sound at the beginning of the adjacent or closely connected words. Now, I'll give you a very popular example of alliteration. Red, red, rose. Okay, r, r, r. Repetition of the sound r, r, r. So, this is an example of, you can say classic example of alliteration. So, in your poem also students, we have many alliterations like that. You can see wanted where, okay, wanted where. So the sound v is repeating here. So it's an example of alliteration. Very good. Now, first for. So here which sound is repeating? The sound f. So it is also an example of alliteration. Next, though that, okay, though that the sound the the is repeating here so it is also an example of alliteration 
You can find many more examples of alliteration. You can find it in this poem and you can also find in some other poems. Okay. So students, I'm sure you have understood the literary devices. Now let's discuss some questions from your book. The first question, students, where does the traveler find himself? Also, what problem does he face? So I'm sure all of you know the answer that the traveler finds himself in the yellow woods at a point where the two roads diverged. The problem that he faces is that he cannot decide which road to take to continue his journey. Okay, next question. Discuss what these phrases mean to you. A yellow wood, it was grassy and wanted wear, the passing there, leaves no step had trodden black, and how way leads on to way. We will discuss each one. Okay, yellow woods. Now, yellow woods refers to the forest in the autumn season. Like I told you before, students, the leaves, they turn yellow. So, popularly, they are referred to as yellow woods. It was grassy and wanted wear. It means that the road was full of grass and very few people had used it. It seemed to invite people to tread on it, to, to walk on it. Okay? Okay. The passing there. The passing there implies the use of the path by the passers-by. Leaves no step had trodden black. It implies that the leaves lying on the road had not been crushed under the feet of the travellers. Okay. The last one. How way leads on to way. Through this phrase, the poet refers to the fact that one road always leads on to another and so on. Next question. Is there any difference between the two roads as the poet describes them in stanza 2 and 3 and in the last two lines of the poem? So let's see in stanza 2 and 3. There is no difference in the roads as the poet describes them in stanza 2 and 3 except that the road he took was covered with grass, looked no, to be not much used. Otherwise, both roads were equally covered with uncrushed leaves as if no person had stepped on them. Now, we'll see the second part. Was there any difference in the last two lines of the poem? In the last two lines of the poem, the poet says that there is a difference between the two roads because the road he opted for was less travelled by the other people. Question, next question. What do you think the last two lines of the poem mean? Looking back, does the poet regret his choice or accept it? The last two lines of the poem reflect the courage to accept the challenge and take the right decisions in life. The poet decided to take the path that was less travelled by the others because he wanted to do something different in his life. And no, the poet does not seem to regret his choice. Now the last uh, answer, the last part, does he seem to regret his choice? So students, this can be very, you know, personal. How you take the poem can be different to what I take the poem. So your opinions might differ and hence the answer can also differ. So students, this was all about the poem, The Road Not Taken. I hope the poem was clear to you. I also expect you to learn something from this poem because it's a poem that gives you lesson, that teaches you some lesson that how to make choices in life. And it also uh, like encourage us, us to take the choices which are not taken by many. We should be brave and we should do what our heart says to us. And we should be happy with the decision that we make. So this was all about the poem students. Okay, we'll meet in the next class. Till then, bye.
and take care.